Hello everybody, today we are going to be looking at lesson 1.5 about piecewise functions. So here is our learning objective. Students will be able to identify and graph piecewise functions including greatest integers, steps, and absolute value functions. So what is a piecewise function? A piecewise function is a function in which more than one formula is used to define the output over different pieces of the domain. So here's an example of a simple piecewise function. So the question here asks, graph f of x of 1 if x is less than or equal to negative 2, graph 2 plus x if x is greater than negative 2, or less than or equal to 3, and graph 2x if x is greater than 3. We want to start with this first function, 1 if x is less than or equal to negative 2. We want to start with x is less than or equal to negative 2, so we can find out what our x boundary is, which in this case is negative 2. We will come down to the graph and go over negative 2 on the x-axis and draw a boundary line. So we come back up to the function, and since this is x, we know this has to be y. So this would equal y equals 1. Now we come back down to the graph and go over negative 2, up 1, and we draw a closed circle because in the function it has a less than or equal to. And less than or equal to or greater than or equal to have closed circles and greater than and less than have open circles. Now, since we know y equals 1 is a horizontal line, we draw a horizontal line to the left. And that is how you graph the first function, 1 if x is less than or equal to negative 2. So let's start with this second function. 2 plus x if x is greater than negative 2 or if x is less than or equal to 3. So we're going to look for the x boundaries which in this case is negative 2 and 3. So we already have our negative 2 x boundary from our last function. So we're going to go to the right 3 which is positive 3 and draw a boundary line there. Now we're going to go back up to the function and put this in terms of y, which will be y equals x plus 2. Now let's start to graph this function by going up 2 because the y-intercept is 2. Going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1 until we get to 3 because the x boundary is 3 and we draw a closed circle because it has a less than or equal to sign in the function and we draw the line. Since 0 is not the x boundary, we have to go down 1 over 1 and down 1 over 1 until we get to negative 2 which is the boundary and then we have a open circle because it is just a greater than, not a greater than, equal to. Then we continue the line. And that is how you graph 2 plus x if x is greater than negative 2 or if x is less than or equal to 3. So let's finish with the third and final function. 2x if x is greater than 3. Now we already have the x boundary 3, so what we have to do first is find the y-intercept for 2x. So to find the y-intercept for this function, you have to plug in 3 for x since 3 is the x value on the, fun on the graph. So you do 2 times 3, which equals 6. So we know where to start our function at on the graph. Now that we've found the y-intercept, we can find our starting point for where we graph the function.
So in this case it'd be 3, 6, because 3 is the x value, and y is the y intercept that we found. So we go over 3 on the x-axis, and up 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now we will have an open circle because in the function it says x is greater than 3, not greater than or less than. And then we continue to graph it by going up 2 over 1 because as you can see the slope equals 2 over 1. So you go up 2 over 1 and then you draw a line continuing up. And that is how you graph this piecewise function. Here is an example of a little more complex piecewise function. So the question here asks, graph f of x equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 6. The first step into graphing this function is to find the y-intercept. To do this, we plug in 0 for x. So to solve this, you would first multiply the absolute value of 0 by 2. And the absolute value of 0 is 0, and 0 times 2 equals 0. And then you subtract that by 6, and you get negative 6. So the y-intercept of this graph will be negative 6. Now that we know what the y-intercept is, we go down negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Since we plugged 0 and 4 x, we know that x equals 0. So this will be our starting point for the absolute value graph. Now to graph the rest of the function, we have to plug in numbers for x. So let's say I put in 1 for x. So you do 2 times the absolute value of 1 minus 6, which in this case would be negative 4. So now on the graph, I would go over positive 1 and go down negative 4 and put a dot. But then since it's absolute value, it's negative 1 and positive 1, so you'd go to negative 1 and go down negative 4 as well. Now I put in negative 1.5 for x. So I do 2 times the absolute value of negative 1.5 minus 6, which in this case would equal 3, negative 3. Now, when I graph this, I go over negative 1.5 and then go down negative 3. 1, 2, 3. But then I also have to do positive 1.5 because, as I've said before, it is a absolute value, so you do positive and negative. So you go positive 1.5 and then go down negative 3. Now I'm going to continue putting in numbers for x so I can graph the whole absolute value function. So next I put in 2 for x. So you do 2 times absolute value of 2 which equals 4 minus 6 which would equal negative 2. So the point would be 2 negative 2 or 2 so now you come to the graph and go over positive 2, down negative 2, over negative 2, down negative 2. Next I plugged in negative 3 for the x value, and when you do 2 times the absolute value of negative 3 minus 6, you get 0. So your points would be negative 3, 0, and then positive 3, zero. You can go over negative 3, 0, and then go over positive 3, 0. Lastly, I would plug in negative 6 for the x value and do 2 times the absolute value of negative 6 minus 6, which would equal 6. So the points would be negative 6, 6, and 6, 6. So when you put the points on the graph, you go over negative 6, up 6, and over positive 6, up 6, and then you would connect the dots.
And that is how you graph absolute value piecewise functions. Here is an example of an advanced greatest integer or step function. For this question, we are going to identify the type of function that models each situation. Then we are going to write a function for that situation. So for this situation, it's going to be business related. So on a certain telephone rate plan, the price of a cellular telephone call is 35 cents per minute or fraction thereof. The question asks us first to identify the type of function that it is asking for. In this case, it would be a greatest integer function because it is asking for the cost of a phone call per minute. So it would be a greatest integer step function. So let's say that I plug in 0 for number of minutes of the call. So it would be 35 times 0, which is 0, if the greatest integer of 0 equals 0. So this would be an open circle at 0, 35. And then you would plug in 0 for the next function. So when you plug in 0 for m and the next function, you would get 35 times the greatest integer of 0 plus 1, which equals 1, if the greatest integer of 1 is less than 0. So we know that that's not true, so we know that 1 minute cannot be more than 35 cents. Now we can draw an open circle at 0, 35 because you can't have 0 minutes of a call, so it cannot be included in the function. But then you go over 1, up 35, and draw a closed circle because everything including 1, or anything less than or including 1, would equal 35 cents. Now to continue this function we would add in numbers to m such as like 1 so this is an example or 2 or 3 or 4 or so on to find out the amount in cents that it would cost for each minute so for plug in 1 we know that 1 minute costs 35 cents because 35 times 1 equals 35 and then in the second function you would ha add these two together, so it would be 35 times absolute or the greatest integer of 2, and then it would be if the greatest integer of 2 is less than 1. So we obviously know that's not true, so we go down to the graph, go up to 70, and we have an open circle because we know that 1 equals 35 cents, but anything above 1 or less than or equal to 2 would equal third or 70 cents. So you would continue adding in numbers to find the boundary for the number of the amount of money it would cost for each minute. Now when you continue to plug in numbers for m into the functions, eventually your graph would look like this. And that was that is how you would graph a greatest integer or step function.